Alright, I am back with another video. Uh, didn't know if I'd do this today, but I'm going to go through the just announced Game Awards nominations. Uh, that happened a little while ago. Jeff Kiley went through them rapid fire in a live stream. And we have uh, both our six nominees and uh, a whole bunch of other categories to go through, including uh, some interesting ones, which I will get to later. This is obviously uh, one of the best years for gaming in a decade, two decades, so everyone was very curious to see how this was going to go. Uh, these awards are not for about another month, I think they're on December 7th, but um, there's some interesting stories here in terms of what did or did not get nominated, and I'll go through all of them, just uh, probably not spending a ton of time on them, but just kind of my thoughts on everything. Uh, I'm still working on my game of the year announcement posts, but uh, we will get into that a different day. I kind of wanted these to come out first, uh, not that it's going to influence my decision, but uh, I knew everyone would be talking about this for a while. Uh, but yeah, so obviously we have game of the year to start here, uh, and these are the six. Kylie said that they would not expand it to 10 like the Oscars did, uh, even though this was a crazy year. Honestly, like this is probably the least controversial list of six they could have picked. Um, I am not shocked to see at least three or four of these on here. I thought the three that were guaranteed would be Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, and Alan Wake 2. Uh, the others seem like they could be a bit of a toss-up, but the fact that those spots are filled by Mario Wonder, Resident Evil 4, and Spider-Man, not stunned. Uh, the clear favorite this year for everything is Baldur's Gate 3, including Game of the Year. Uh, we just saw it pretty much sweep the golden joysticks, all the categories it was nominated for. And, you know, I previously said Tears of the Kingdom was a sure thing, and that was before I had any idea how good Baldur's Gate was going to be. So here we are. Uh, I think the biggest dark horse contender to Baldur's Gate 3 is Alan Wake 2. Uh, if we're doing this all by meta score, I think, I think Alan Wake 2 is the lowest meta score on here. It's like an 88 or 87 or something, but critics freaking love that game. Like, they adore that game, and I've seen so many critics say it's their game of the year. Uh, I, I just finished it. I, I liked it a lot. It's not like my genre per se. I'm not like a survival horror person. I didn't play Alan Wake 1, but I enjoyed it. I, I really understand what people see in it. It's just not, you know, maybe a top game for me this year. But knowing who votes in these kind of things, you could see that potentially, potentially, you know, winning. But I still think it's going to be Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man, I... Gave it a slightly lower score than the average, but I still really enjoyed it. I still think it um, uh, improves on the first game and perfectly content to see it nominated here. Uh, I, I don't think it'll win. I think it's going to win like action game or action adventure game or whatever it's called, but very cool to see Insomniac get uh, the nomination here. Resident Evil 4, I'm a little surprised just because it's a remake, but obviously it was a very high quality one and Capcom has been killing it with new and old Resident Evil games. And then, of course, uh, Super Mario Wonder, not stunning. I mean, it's maybe not the most talked about game of this year, but it was extremely well reviewed. It's a mainline 2D Mario game. Uh, you know, are you really that shocked that it would be uh, on the list here? That said, the fact that it is here and if Tears ever did have a chance, I feel like you're splitting the Nintendo fan vote between uh, Mario and Zelda here. Um, so this lets you click through the categories. Uh, the others will be faster than this. <laughs> um, there's like 30 categories and I don't care about like best esports events and things like that. So some, some things will be get skipped. Best game direction. Um, this is where we, you know, get into the old Oscars question of like, what, if something is the best directed film, does that mean it's the best film? Not necessarily. Uh, this is an opportunity where if one game did win game of the year, you could give this to another game. This is one one space I could see Baldur's Gate would probably win this, is my guess, given the insane level of direction it takes to pull that game off. But also, this feels like a place that Alan Wake 2 could get, like, runner-up Game of the Year award, I, I suppose. I would be surprised if the other three would get it. I think it's either Alan Wake or Baldur's for this one. But that is a very high-profile uh, thing there. Uh, so that's narrative. This is best storytelling uh, in a game. And this is one of many places you will see Cyberpunk, uh, Phantom Liberty pretty much treated as its own game. Um, that's not that unusual because we've seen, I think The Witcher Wild Hunt was kind of treated similarly to uh, this just one best expansion of the Golden Joysticks. I don't even know if that's a category uh, in this, but so it's in the running for best narrative. And yet, <laughs> Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3. 
have to believe Baldur's Gate would probably win that one. Just the ins- the sheer insanity of the narrative that game sets up with like any individual NPC storyline, and that could be you know its its own win. Uh, here we finally see uh, Final Fantasy 16 slipping in here. Spider Man for best narrative is is interesting. That's a little surprising, but you know I don't I don't hate it. Um, and then of course Alan Wake two. What else would you expect? I think Alan Wake has. I think it's the second highest amount of total nominations from Baldur's Gate. Again, it's it's a little hard to see Baldur's not winning there, but we'll see. Best art direction. Uh, now we get into a broader category of games. Zelda and Mario. Uh, of course, I don't think you're going to have Zelda win being, you know, Breath of the Wild art direction. <laughs> uh, very similar, but um, once again, Alan Wake 2, I could easily see Alan Wake 2 winning art direction. Like if It's like art direction, the game. Essentially, Hi-Fi Rush, that could definitely be a contender as well. I think the art direction in that game is fantastic. I know a lot of people love Lies of P. I don't know anything about Lies of P. It's, there's so many games out. This is one I missed. Like I know that people like this a lot, but I have no, no frame of reference for this game uh, at all. But I guess it has good art direction. So there we are. The score and music. Uh, I think this would probably be a Baldur's Gate one too. I know, I know Hi-Fi Rush is like you know, music, the game, but this feels like it's probably Baldur's Gate or Final Fantasy, I I would say for this. Um, That would just be my guess, but, you know, I'm not like Mr. Music Person, so I don't know if that is a guarantee. That's audio design. Okay, this, at at a certain point, I think you're going to have to give one of these audio ones to Hi-Fi Rush and, you know, audio, in-game audio design, like that's essentially what Hi-Fi Rush is. So I would be a little shocked if that didn't win. Uh, got a Dead Space in here, the Dead Space remake, which I know uh, is very good, but um, haven't seen that shown up till now. Uh, best performance. Okay, so there are so many good games out this year that have so many good performances. You can have one performance category at the Game Awards. Like, at least Golden Joysticks had best performance and best supporting performance. Like, you could nominate probably, what, five people from Baldur's Gate and, like, I don't know, two or three people from Cyberpunk. You know, it's there really should be more than just six nominees for this. And like, I don't, you don't, you don't have to break it out by gender. Like I know the Oscars does that, but six is, is too small for this entire uh, industry. Uh, ben Starr won the golden joystick. I would not be surprised to see him win here. Love Cameron Monaghan in Jedi survivor. Uh, Idris Elba was phenomenal in cyberpunk. Uh, no offense, better than Keanu did an excellent job there. Um, uh, Melanie in whose saga in Alan Wake was fantastic, and this is a starian. Obviously, everybody loves him. Uh, I really like Yuri Lowenthal's performance. I'm not like the biggest fan of that Peter Parker, but I think he had a good performance, especially in this game uh, with all the symbiote stuff. It's a really good nomination list. I just think they could have expanded it even further uh, past this. Like, if you're going to na- nominate Idris Elba, you can nominate Jeremy Lay, like for you know her her V performance, or you know there, there's a lot of other options here. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that ever expands. I think there's too many like extraneous categories in the Game Awards in the first place, but we'll see. Okay, innovation in accessibility. Uh, this is a um, Diablo 4. I see. I, like, I don't know enough about the accessibility options in these games to accurately say this, but it is good that all of these games support it. First time we're seeing Diablo 4 anywhere, uh, which is uh, interesting, but uh, fighting games are doing a lot to support accessibility. And so that's uh, Games for Impact. This is the one where it's like games with a good message that it feels like they wouldn't otherwise be nominated uh, in, in an award show like this. So like, I guess it's a way to spotlight games that aren't, you know, big blockbusters or even like highest, the highest profile indie games. Uh, I have never heard of any of these. I'm sorry if that makes me too, too mainstream, but I, I don't know what they are. Best Ongoing. Apex Legends, and we have Cyberpunk in the ongoing games category now. That is very interesting. Um, it is obviously not a live service game. It is a game that had a bunch of f- fix the game patches and some minor updates and then a big expansion. Uh, but that counts as an ongoing game. It's a very No Man's Sky like arc, although No Man's Sky had like 50 million updates, so it's a little different. It's just kind of funny to see it here like three years later. Um, Final Fantasy XIV probably gonna win i feel like that always wins fortnite is past its its prime here uh i don't think it's gonna win even with the new season everybody likes for this current month 
Genshin Impact, I had to give it up. It was too time consuming and expensive. <laughs> um, my, my guess would be Final Fantasy XIV. Obviously, I, think, I personally think it would be cool if Cyberpunk won. We'll see if there's enough uh, converted Cyberpunk fans uh, to win that. And best, oh God. best community support. Okay, Baldur's Gate, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy XIV, No Man's Sky, and Destiny 2. This, of course, is, I don't know if ironic is the best, darkly ironic, uh, because uh, Bungie, of course, laid off large portions of their community support team a couple weeks ago. Uh, this includes uh, Liana Rupert, Sam Bartley, um, Griffin Clone, uh, all very key members of, of making player support work, very public faces for it. And they've been laid off despite being nominated as one of the best community support teams in the world at the, essentially, the biggest game show in the world. Uh, I saw Griffin and Liana both immediately post about this. Like, can't blame them. It's absurd. Uh, and, you know, some people were like, I was like, stunned about it people were like oh ho, ho, that's such a joke why do they just i'm like no i'm not they i'm not saying they don't deserve it that's ridiculous because they were just fired like i think yes destiny 2 does have good player support it is just often hamstrung by corporate demands and what they're not allowed to talk about and whatever but i think it had been steadily improving uh i did hear that destiny when destiny won back in 2019 for best community support and they had, uh, at the time, Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy, who were in charge of Destiny 2, as the ones to accept that award instead of anyone from the community team that did not feel great. Uh, I I don't know if I would expect Destiny to win uh, this year. I, You know, th this is not like some fan vote or something where all Destiny fans could rally behind the fired Bungie employees and, and do it. Uh, this is, it's still like a panel. Um, I... I think it would be good if if the Bungie employees were rallied behind by all the voting people. I, I think there are a lot of sympathetic, uh, you know, journalists and inter industry figures voting on this stuff that are well aware of the Bungie layoffs and well aware of who was laid off. Um, if we're doing pure merits, I, I don't know. Like Boulder's Gate just won uh, best community support at the Golden Joysticks. Uh, I've had great experience with uh, great experiences with CDPRs. Um, community teams and PR teams and stuff and like I I have ripped into that game many times from you know especially during launch period and like obviously I've come around but uh, yeah I you know that's that's it's good to see them there Final Fantasy 14 No Man's Sky I don't I'm not involved with those communities but I know I think both of those have won it in the past at some point but would love to see Destiny win that and uh, we'd be sort of in cosmic justice uh, okay best indie game so it was interesting because Game of the Year this year, we did not see any kind of sleeper indie nominees. There's usually at least one. Uh, and sometimes it wins. Like, It Takes Two is a much smaller game uh, compared to everything else, and it won. Uh, this year, you could have seen probably Cocoon, Dave the Diver, or Sea of Stars is my guess. Especially Sea of Stars is, is the one game nominated in the indie slot, but too many games this year, so that did not happen. So we are going to... Uh, just have them in this category here. Uh, I have not played any of these yet, but I do actually want to play at the very least Sea of Stars and Cocoon, I think. But um, yeah, we'll see if what comes out there. Best debut indie game. We're doing more of these. Uh, Cocoon and Dredge are still there for that. Don't know these other ones. Do we need both? I don't, I really, I, I get that they're trying to bring in smaller games, so do we need best indie game and best debut indie game? Uh, best mobile game. I don't know. Sure. I don't play mobile games, and it's interesting that a lot of these are starting to be spin-offs of like regular games. But uh, Netflix has actually been doing really well with their kind of mo in-house mobile games or in-house partnerships. Uh, don't count Netflix out. They're like not they're not messing around. Best VR AR. Uh, Horizon just won this with golden joysticks. Would not hate cutting this category. <laughs> it's like I I don't want to say it's like best Web3 blockchain game, but I don't know. I, I'm very biased against VR. I think everybody knows that, but sure. There's, I just don't know if there's enough. Ugh, whatever. Okay. Best action game. 
Uh, okay, so finally, we get a nomination for Remnant 2. I know a lot of people were uh, hoping to see Remnant 2 get nominated for a lot of stuff. I heard some people even saying it should get nominated for Game of the Year. In my own personal list, I could see that. In a larger industry list, eh, that was not going to happen. Um, so here we actually do not have any games that are in the Game of the Year category. So this is kind of a, a, a free, you know, uh, range here. I think very much it's down to Armored Core 6, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant. My guess is probably between Hi-Fi Rush and Armored Core 6. Like, I personally would obviously pick Remnant, but I don't know how many people in the wider pool have played it. So we'll see. Again, there's action, and then there's action-adventure, which is different. This is primarily focused on combat instead of jumping. Yeah, there's traversal and puzzle solving. Uh, okay, so this is where things get really weird every time with the Game Awards because they always have, it's not just this show, but all these shows, they break it off into individual categories. So the auto loser here is Jedi Survivor because all four of these are nominated for Game of the Year. Uh, if one of these wins earlier in the show, then the other ones that do not win should probably you should probably assume they are not going to win Game of the Year. So if Alan Wake wins, <laughs> you would assume Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Tears of the Kingdom will not win Game of the Year. Or if Tears of the Kingdom wins, definitely don't think Alan Wake 2 is going to win Game of the Year. So this really screws everything up because if that doesn't happen, it doesn't make any sense and the voters are being idiots. So <laughs> it's it's a, a tough you know situation. Like I get that they want to do genre awards, but it, it totally screws up Game of the Year. Best RPG... Obviously, Baldur's Gate 3, and it has taken this long to get us to mention Starfield once, which I guess is in RPG, not action-adventure. I guess, I mean, I get it. I still think it's more of an action-adventure game. I I don't know, whatever. You can you can make your own judgment, but pu putting it in with Baldur's Gate 3 is auto-lose no matter what. I think, I think Bethesda is going to be very disappointed. Uh, with Starfield's performance in something like this, uh, in this award show, it's kind of insane to think that a mainline Bethesda game doesn't even get a nomination uh, for Game of the Year out of six entries. Um, that is just not a thing that happens, like unless you're talking Fallout 76 level disaster. Like Starfield is is popular. It it did well for Xbox. It has a large player base that has had uh, a long tail of playtime, uh, but. Review scores, not the highest for a mainline Bethesda game. I think they settled like an 83. Obviously, I really like Starfield a lot. I am the crazy person who gave it a 9.5, and I really, really like it. I put 180 hours into it, and I thought it was great. But I do understand in a year like this why it did not secure a top six spot. But you know Bethesda wanted that. You know Bethesda wanted game of the year, honestly. I mean, even if it was a lot better, it probably still wouldn't have beaten Baldur's Gate, but... I think they may be doing some soul searching after that. Uh, well, we already know they're doing Elder Scrolls Six next, so it's not like they have to alter that path. Best fighting game, gotta believe it's probably going to be Street Fighter Six. That had insane reviews. People do like Mortal Kombat One a lot. I don't know enough about these other games. I don't know what God of Rock is. That looks cool though. Best family game, um, Mario, obviously. <laughs> uh, again, it's Game of the Year nominated. Um, this is starting to lag now, switching categories. Okay, best sim strategy. Yeah, now we're getting into things I just don't know. We might be done with most of the relevant categories. Uh, sports games, F1, why not? Best multiplayer. Oh, int okay, well. Um, <laughs> I hope seeing these two next to each other. <laughs> Really, the first time Diablo 4 has been nominated for anything of significance here. Uh, that's interesting. Like, I know there's like this big anti Diablo 4 narr narrative now, but I think you could have nominated Diablo 4 for best narrative. That campaign narrative was great. It really was. And you could have nominated whoever voiced Lilith as best performance. Uh, I know everyone kind of soured on it in the end game and in season one. It's, it's still a really good game. It's really good now. It's really fun in season two. Uh, again, if you are nominated with Baldur's Gate 3 and Super Mario Wonder, this is one category where I do wonder, no pun intended, if something like Diablo 4 could win because you may really love Baldur's Gate 3 and yet believe that 
playing it as a multiplayer game, Diablo 4 is, is more fun to play as a multiplayer game. So I don't know. That this is one area why I don't think it's a guarantee that something that's nominated for game of the year would would destroy something else. Uh obviously I would be pulling for Diablo 4, but I hard to expect it to win in this current climate. Best adaptation. Um so this is a new thing they do for I think they did this last year at least. Uh, a movie or TV adaptation of a video game. Um, obviously, in this list here, the highest quality bar is almost certainly The Last of Us show, which was expertly done in terms of overall impact. Super Mario Brothers movie is one of the highest grossing movies of the entire year. In terms of the, wow, I did not see that coming, Twisted Metal on Peacock, shockingly good. <laughs> really exactly what it needed to be and a lot of fun um like we expected last of us on hbo to really be good given you know the quality you would imagine this show is going to be terrible it's actually quite good have to imagine last of us is going to win most anticipated game this is just marketing bullshit uh yo yeah it can't be zelda anymore it was like it was zelda every year like forever um it's probably going to be final fantasy 7 rebirth Maybe Star Wars Outlaws, but I don't think we know enough about that. It's not going to be Tekken 8. Maybe... I don't know. I don't know. My guess would be Final Fantasy 7. Uh, content Creator of the Year. I know two of these people. <laughs> I've, I've heard of them. Uh, yeah, now we get into, like, esports stuff. I'm sure uh, in a few years that um, Bungie wants Marathon to be on here. Uh, they haven't really talked about esports for it, but you know, I I have to imagine they're going to try maybe. Esports athlete, always vote for Faker, no matter what. This esports team, uh, the as of the teams that have not collapsed as of yet. Yeah, esports is in a little bit of rough shape. Um, this esports coach, I do not know them. This esports event, and that's it. Okay, so. That is the Game Awards. Uh, I don't think it's going to be exactly a shocking show. I think Baldur's Gate is going to win almost everything it's nominated for in the major categories. Um, I am rooting for a few of you know my lower key favorites to pick up an award or two in categories they can. But even in a crazy year, this is Baldur's Gate's to lose. It would be kind of nuts if like Zelda wasn't nominated for that many things. Like to see Tears of the Kingdom like win almost nothing would be kind of wild. But uh, I think Alan Wake's going to do really well. And again, I would love for the Destiny 2 community team to win this award uh, uh, posthumously, as it were. Because that's just such a fuck situation. Uh, Kylie needs to do something to recognize what a brutal year this has been for industry layoffs. Like, I don't know how exactly you do that, but you can't just pretend like it doesn't exist just because this is such a good year for gaming. The Game Awards Twitter account or his Twitter account has already gotten in trouble for being like, what are your guys? Am I right? Like right after some big layoff happened or something. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what that does. The The big question about Game Awards is whether that's going to be the place where the GTA 6 trailer drops. Uh, I can see both ways. On the one hand, no, Rockstar does not need the Game Awards at all and they could do their own launch events and own the news cycle for a whole week. That said... Uh, if they do debut at the Game Awards, or even just wait till after the Game Awards, you have to imagine that Game Awards viewership would go way up with people trying to uh, see when the GTA 6 trailer will drop. Uh, and if it does drop, it's, it, or if it's announced ahead of time, it will debut at the Game Awards. It's really going to be like the Baldur's Gate and GTA 6 show. <laughs> like, because those will be the only two things anyone remembers after all that. But that's a conversation for a different day. But. Anyway, um, I'm taking a little break from games at the moment. I just finished Alan Wake 2. Destiny is obviously not demanding my attention right now. Um, yeah, obviously I have a backlog, but I've been catching up, catching up on some shows and things. But yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.